Welcome back, everyone, to... Sorry if that blows everyone's ears up. Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Roll Series th Week 3 Grand Finals. We are going to be f watching Golda and Randy go at it in a best of three, possibly two, depending on whether or not Golda wins. And we are already going, and I am joined by Crow, or Saika, or... Why do you use different you names? You just call me Psyka. I think that's my name on Discord. But yeah, I use a is a different name anywhere, and I need to really ask the zero K admins to change it. But again, um, yes. Looks, looks like we have another uh another hover mirror, which is very interesting. Well, yeah, yes, which I was pointing out last time. I was pleasantly surprised by, and this time I am also pleasantly surprised by Hover Mirror on Red Comet. Although apparently Golda just plays Hover on Red Comet. Which is fine. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's just that's just Golda's thing, is that he he drops hover. But uh very very interesting use especially the last game as well um of you know daggers and uh, daggers are very just they're very good right now in the current meta uh they do a little bit too much for what they're supposed to do if you can just like spam them you can take on a lot of defenses of which they can actually kill stardust quite easily for some reason which is a little bit odd but uh oh, they are a very yeah. strong unit definitely i mean they always have been i think it was a speed increase is the main thing that changed because Daggers, in terms of damage and health, have been the same for years. Like, Dota yeah. has been playing this strategy since before I started commentating this game. And I started commentating in 2013. So, yeah. this is old. On this specific map, well, not this version of the map, the earlier versions that aren't quite as pretty. But yeah. Red Comet, Hovers, Mass Dagger has been Goa's play for a decade. Yeah, definitely. But uh, it looks like uh, Goldie was able to pull off some early game that is... For some reason, no, it was Randy. My bad. Um, looks like Randy was able to pull off some early game rating there, uh, but not leading to anything super major. Just you know, giving giving Gold yeah. a nice metal donation. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, Gold has got Gold has got the better rate. I mean, they've got they've been playing this since longer than Randy's been playing Zerk at all. So it's like, yeah, having to face against Gold's dagger play has got to be intimidating. Yeah, definitely. And um, really, no one's uh, fairly even right now. Especially, uh, Golde has a little bit of a little bit of a medal advantage here. But um, it's interesting to see how uh, Randy here is expanding very lightly. There's not a lot of infrastructure at all. Mainly, you know, just radar, radar nexus. Um, and that's a very easy target for these daggers to come along and you know just kind of blow up. So it's going to be we're going to have to see how. Randy secures that infrastructure here in a second as some daggers start well, hitting top. Well, by aggression. <laughs> just yeah, carrying, true. Just carrying it by, they're securing it by, by distraction in the main base and by making sure that they have their own daggers around where they need to be. Because also, that dagger up here, it fired one of its shots at the radar, meaning the defending dagger can kill it. Yep. So that's that's how Randy's planning on doing that, is just they, they have the radar to know where to put their daggers, and the daggers can easily go around the map wherever they need to be. Yeah, and the, honestly, one of the things that surprises me most in, in this particular matchup, too, is that uh, I'm not seeing either players build an LLT at base. Um, very, you know, that's like no, typically considered for even new players. Very, very, like, crucial advice. But I doesn't work for players, daggers. Yeah, it doesn't work like for daggers. It's spam daggers. <laughs> well, because the problem is that once you have seven daggers, they one-shot lotuses. Or eight yeah, daggers, my bad. True. And once, so you have that, and it's like, okay, so you have your lotus up. That's all well and good. But... Eight daggers come in, kill it immediately. It barely does any damage to the dagger in the process. Not to mention, much like Kodachi's, daggers can just hit the, the periphery of the defended area. So mm -hmm. it don't even matter because they have such long range uh, relative yeah. to most raiders. So the Lotus really can't do much. Now, a picket, yeah, and, on the other hand, I mean, pickets are, more, are a bit better for their cost. But by and large, the best defense is really just having more daggers of your own. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, seeing top right now, um, it's very, very interesting that, uh, you know, I don't think either side has built anything by daggers yet. Um, but just securing that top area just for, you know, using daggers aggressively and, uh, and you know, um, using the fight order around uh, Randy's front line there. Mm -hmm. um, well, the bottom can just, you know, Gade can just expand for the bottom. And in fact, uh, Gade is getting very close to actually having pretty complete control of the bottom area of the map as long as he caps those last uh, four remaining mechs there in the center. Uh, um, there's, not really, 
a lot that Randy can do about it. Randy only has, you know, three daggers bought, and most of his dagger force is currently preoccupied in the top, making sure those uh, goddess daggers don't, you know, come and blow all of his top infrastructure up. So, very, True. very good use of Gade using those daggers to keep uh, Randy preoccupied in top while he expands you in the bottom. Yeah, like I said, distraction is a key part of how the defensive game works in this particular matchup. Although, I gotta, say, gotta get handed to Randy for saving their quill and setting up at least a line of mexes to get themselves kind of in the south again. Yeah, definitely. Um, really, I think one of the one of the best moves for Randy here would be to you know try to control that self infrastructure and start trying to you know get some get some damage on really anything in that south part. It's not too too well secured except for those three LLTs uh, sitting in one place. And if you know if you just get eight lo eight uh, daggers, you can just one shot that lotus. So maybe some base rating you know through the south where it's pretty unsecured and you can just yeah. kind of go around everything. Uh, oh, but right eight, now, they have 24. They have 26. Yeah, they have, they got too many. <laughs> um, yeah, but right now it's just it's just daggers, daggers fighting daggers. That's all that's going on. Yeah, but Randy's got the numbers advantage, the localized numbers advantage. I mean, they got to worry a little bit about line splash, but I think Gorda might actually be in a worse position as far as their units placements go, relative to each other. Yeah, definitely. I was a little bit concerned there uh, watching uh, Randy's daggers come in through through the middle, right above. Uh, Gode's base because I was I was about to watch them get pincered. Uh, it looked like Gode was about to send some daggers around, so I was a little bit afraid for Randy there trying yep. to you know send oh, a bunch of units in. Oh, brilliant though! But, did you see the way Randy pulled those daggers around? Like great. Yeah, I did. That was proper use of line move. Very smart positioning there to just wipe out all, as many of Gode's daggers as they could. Like very good. You know, when you're using daggers, you know line move excellent tool to use. Keeps everything spaced nicely. You know, prevents you from getting any sort of friendly fire. Very good tool to use there. And um, now that he's done that, this this top area is actually, he, uh, you know, Randy can kind of come in here and secure this top area. But at least Gotti has a constructor, uh, you know, up there getting some getting some infrastructure done. And hopefully some defenses here in a second. It looks like Randy's about to come in and, and start doing some damage. But uh, no, I wouldn't be so sure. You, got it. you can't underestimate the intimidation power of the daggers. Randy's not going to go in unless they absolutely know they can take everything out without any losses. Yeah, definitely. And both sides now have a, uh, a never hovercraft plate, so now their their uh, output capacity is Ooh. doubled. Randy going um, to the halberds, too, going for getting rid of all these defensive turrets, just because why very not? Very good idea, yeah. I assume at some point, uh, somewhat soon, that... There will try to be a halberd push into where uh, Goddess Calm is, but I'm I'm not sure how soon that will be, especially with uh, Goddess uh, daggers attacking this this top uh, right now. North area. It'll be right now. That's when it'll no, be. Yeah, you... it'll be right now. Hold on, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like no, you you called it right in time. That's, that's exactly what's going to happen. And Goddess Commander, however, should be fine. There's way too many actually, daggers actually, coming no, in. I, I think I think he's dead. Oh, I sorry, my he... bad. Goddess Blue. <laughs> I got completely mixed up. People were talking about whether or not I was colorblind. I am not colorblind, but if you thought it was in that particular instance, I would not blame you. No, man, man, man yeah. very dead there, yeah. Okay, well, Randy's definitely put themselves in a massively advantageous position. And I... I mean, what has God got here right now? they got maces. That's a good choice. That'll help deal with the daggers, but... Yeah, but Still, now these, these halberds control. that he's making, uh, they can just go and, you know, if he keeps making them, of which it looks like he's just switched back to pure daggers. But just coming in, you know, through this top and uh, and starting to wipe out the, the economy infrastructure there, uh, it's going to be very, very devastating to, to Gade's economy. Yep. Um, and... Especially, I think Gade is about 10 metal per second behind now. Yes, they are indeed. Yeah. And on top of that, Golda has... Actually, they've managed to get rid of some of that stuff, but really, the more the reclaim is so massively in Randy's favor right now. They haven't taken much, yeah. of it, surprisingly, but they yeah, no, have uh, control. No caretakers or anything mid yet from either side, which is honestly surprising. Is uh, there is about you know one fifth of the map area total in reclaim right now. There is so much, um, but you know, no caretakers. Yeah, I think most both sides are mainly preoccupied on you know just keeping the aggression up in order to keep. The uh, enemy forces at bay, but Gade has this push coming top now. Uh, is probably actually going to be able to do quite a bit of damage to Randy's infrastructure. Yeah, Randy's got that. They already started going for a scalpel mace build, but I think it might be too a little too late to prevent significant damage. I don't think this will take the game, but then again, Gode has taken a lot of map control already, and Randy hasn't 
they're not paying attention to their commander. If their commander was building up economy and defenses and reclaiming and such, oh, they are just starting to do so. But if I was doing that before, I'd be thinking, okay, they're fine. But as it stands, this feels really tight. Like, Randy could yeah, very well be in a losing position after this fight. This is also a very, you know, strange circumstance, because if you notice, uh, Gotti does not have many defenses at all here. Uh, he has, like, four LTs in mid, and that's about it. But uh, if, you, if you notice, Randy has, like, how many LLTs and pickets right now? Like, ten yeah, total? Half, yeah, half a dozen LLTs and a, nearly a dozen pickets. Yeah, so definitely definitely more defense value, but sadly that defense value uh, is, is static. It's not, uh, not can't move that around anywhere, so it's not really not really valuable when all of your opponent's units can, you know, just go go straight around you. So it's happening in uh, South right now. Um, Gade coming through with another small army, just wiping out more economy infrastructure. I mean, fortunately for Randy, they at least have some things in the way of riot units, but it's not much. It's honestly not enough. Like, Randy, they have some scalpels, some maces, some boluses. It's not that strong and the bulls is coming in here from Goda are just making randy's day absolutely horrible i think this is entirely turned around and largely because randy surprisingly hasn't been rebuilding as quickly as i normally would expect or reclaiming yeah definitely now uh, all these daggers and um boluses are getting into randy's base this might this might be the game um doesn't really have anything to deal with it no defenses built and uh gun is also bringing in more daggers as we speak so uh, this this might very well be be wrapping things up. Yeah, it looks um, like the factory's about to go down, and that's generally when you know the game has ended. Yeah, and that's that what Randy is, says. That's a GG. That is a GG. Randy is now down one game, go to one zero, but it is best of three. So we yep. are gonna have that as a thing, and that means Randy gets to pick the next map, I believe. And as a note, um, DSR rule is in effect, which is a rule that a lot of game communities have it basically states that uh if you win on a match in a best of three you can't go back to, or you can't go back to that map so now that god is one on red comet uh for say if he wants to go back to it in you know game game three or something um he can no longer go back to red comet so that is now out. so cobalt dreams is the only one left um flat map wise that he can right. go back to so oh okay are we going to that's it's not it. What? Desert Needle isn't legal, right? No. Yeah, it's just automatic. The the, map, yeah, the room like, does that. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry about that. Yeah, so Gade, Gade does ban maps. Um. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, Gade bans maps. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of curious why... So, did you say you were doing Smash Brothers tournaments before, or just tournaments with Smash GG? Because that's confusing. Um... No, I do. So I run a weekly Smash Bros. Ultimate tournament. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, and it that's... happens uh, two hours before this one. Uh, that oftentimes I, uh... for about the first hour. Yeah, they run over each other. So. Oh, okay, because I was thinking, I meant more on the question of like the way that you do the map bands kind of reminds me of sort of the way the stage bands work. Uh, yeah, it's very similar. Um, and that's one of the things I was contacting Smash GG about in the first place. And the reason, one of the reasons we might be switching to challenge next week as well is that uh, Smash GG supports rule sets for stage banning, which would have been very handy because, you know, it just brings up the list for you and you check things off of it. Right. Um, but sadly, in this case, they have they are not willing to support that request. So if we're going to be doing it manually, you know, there's no real point in still using Smash GG if we can just do everything with challenge and 0k chat. Yeah. And if more of the players are used to using challenge anyway and challenge has self-report, then that works for me as well. So I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. I was playing a tournament on Tuesday that had I was I could have self-reported. I yeah, I just made, I was, was done, but. toying around with it a second ago, and it seems to. So I think we will be switching next week. Along yeah, with, that'll uh, be easier. Getting our map pulled updated, so should be should be nice. Okay, cool. Anyway, Gorda has taken up Baron Banners, Planes, Iski, and Cobalt Dreams, which is oh no, loser previous game. Yeah, so I thought Randy does get a ban. So yep. it's Frosty, Frosty, Shimmer Shore, Mecha and Sonia, and. Isis Delta. Isis Delta's on the map? Wait a sec, what? Hmm? Hang on. Sorry, I gotta check, double check the map list here. I didn't... Wait, what? Why did they ban Isis Delta? That's not... That's never been in any tournament, I don't think. Oh, Isis Delta? Um. Did you seriously put Isis Delta on the map list? There, there's Isis Delta on there, and it's... 
It's for a reason. Um, Why? For some reason, it's still in the 1v1 featured, and I was very surprised. So I was like, maybe it's a new version. Because, you know, there's there's kind of the historic joke at this point that Isis Delta is broken. Well, uh, it's the, no, yeah, it's it is broken. Yeah, it's no, asymmetric. It really the works map. like it should. So well, it's, I was, I was like, thinking it as the training like, map, but, it, yeah. but yeah, so so it's on there, but it's kind of on there as a joke. So it's uh okay, yeah, I but just, it's the uh, okay. I would like to see a game on it if they want to. <laughs> That'd be very. I have funny, seen but... <laughs> I have seen exactly one game on it five years ago, and it was a gunship mirror. It was a gunship versus Amphibot, and it was nuts. It was just it was bad. It, it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. It was it was the, one of the worst games I've casted. Yeah, definitely, and you know, Amp can't really even do that much on the map because half of it is cliffs. So yeah, exactly. You ever, you ever play spiders in the RC, or you play air and attempt to play air as best you can of GS, and hope to not get AA spammed. Um, well, anyway, we're getting Sparkles Reef, so some C, some C, yeah, finally. Um, and both these players are you know fairly uh, high elo. I forget Gotti's is Gotti number number one still. I think no. I think right now Dregs is number one. Not hundred percent so, sure. Let me go check the list. Uh... Gold has been number one for years running though. So if they aren't number one right now, they are still. Uh, Gold is number two. Dregs is number three, and uh, Randy's four. So you know, two second and fourth on the on the top players. So who's so, number one? You know, not... uh, Manu twelve. Oh yes, yes, of course. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm sorry, Manu twelve. Well, I, I forgot you existed. I don't even think I've ever met them, but, you know, who knows. All right, anyway, um, we got to get to the game itself, because the game itself is started. Ah. And, uh, Amphmere. Very, very fun. Oh, uh, cool. No, no, not Amphmere. It's ships versus Amp. No, ships versus ships. ships. There's no Amps whatsoever. Oh, okay. It's ships-based. For some reason, I looked at the factory icon, and I was like, hmm, that's that's Amps. I know, oh. I know factory icons. I'm smart. I don't know. <laughs> okay, like... <laughs> Real talk here, I don't know factory icons. I've been casting this game for the better part of a decade. I still don't know unit icons. Yeah, the only ones I like have memorized are the ones for air, because I normally play uh, control tab in overview to play air. So right. uh so that's like the only the only ones I know by heart because I'm normally just fighting, you know, whoever else is playing air. Um in team games. But oh, uh, yeah, okay, I was yeah. I was like, I see an icon, I think that's that's amps, and it was not amps, that was very wrong. Nope. But uh is this double Mariner start from 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 Randy? Well, I mean, I guess. Or they were hover last time and ships this time. It's mirror. Yeah. Granted, well, on, like, on this map, you yeah. go ships. Yeah, I've, I've never seen anyone not go ships. Well, I wasn't talking so much about ships as the fact that Randy, I think, just rushed two constructors right out the gate instead of getting any raiding party. Um, yeah, that's not that surprising. Was, it's not Gold. too surprising with ships, definitely. Uh, but also with Randy versus Gorda, because Gorda ha is and has always been a micro-oriented player. Like, Gorda is the kind of player who will get as aggressive as possible, and is actually really good at keeping the units alive. So fighting against Gorda either means trying to out-micro them, which is a tall order, or setting things up so that their micro doesn't matter, which is what yeah, Randy's doing. Definitely, and um, I think as long as Randy expands uh consistently he and you know remembers to build enough defenses um hopefully not as many as last game that was a little bit overkill for mid i think but, uh... I, yeah that probably cost him the game honestly <laughs> yeah i was like uh um but as long as like he remembers to secure you know the economy infrastructure properly i think this will be be all right probably will i mean at this point gorda is actually being a bit more about now it's about to spread out they're a bit more aggressive when it comes to their hunter placement, but then again, Randy's also got their hunters nice and together. That means they can easily come in and shut down any time anything they find of Golda's. Yeah, and another another unit that works really well with uh, line movement is is hunters. Very very nice ship to use. I mean, line okay, movement. everything works well with line movement. Okay, Nothing true. works well without line movement. <laughs> line move is strictly better than point move. I mean, the only the only unit that I would say like works well with outline movement is anything in shield fact because then you just use circle guard and circle guard is life okay so. okay i'll, I'll see I'll, i will concede that shield bot factory works fine with point move because of the shield balls yeah you just, you just circle guard the felon and you, and you use point move but uh yeah otherwise you you're very correct that uh, everything <laughs> works well with, uh, with line move yeah like i keep saying it i think i put it in my big like beginner one minute tutorial. I think I mentioned something about line move there. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, that or now, my tactics for, video. I don't know, something. I'm probably going to sound like an old person saying this, but uh, sonars are now no longer in the game, correct? Like, they have... Sonars they have, have not been in the game for years. Sonars yeah, have... Like... They were... No, every un every C unit has a sonar capabilities of some capacity. And... Okay, that's what I thought. And I was like, I'm not sure if uh, if radar... Yeah, you, know, you can see, you can see but... in the unit in the unit descriptions and space menu, their sonar range is equivalent to their sight range. Okay, got you. So, so basically yeah. just sight radar. Essentially, um, it's just underwater sight. The only difference is that sea units have it, but like gunships don't, for instance. Yeah. So okay. you can't see, like not everything can see underwater, but anything on the surface of the water can, or underwater can. Got you. So yeah, Um, this is looking, was looking oh, kind of bad no, for Randy. Randy. Wait, is this? Randy, Randy, no. Randy. Randy. No. <laughs> Wait, he might no, okay, no, it's very dead. Okay. Oh boy, God has um, got oh, Okay, no. I think God has gone to bracket reset. I think I think bracket Oh, oh that's boy. Rough. That's yeah, that is absolutely <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm speaking too soon. Randy's actually fine economically. They just need to get the storage up and get their energy back no, going. Randy's, Randy's energy is very not fine as a Okay, they just need their energy back sure. up. It's like <laughs> it's still good. It's still good. They just need more energy. <laughs> yeah, they just just build, need more power build plants. Some, build some title gens. Build some title gens. That's all you need. <laughs> just, just make E. You'll be fine. <laughs> Don't want to call it as being over yet. <laughs> and it's Randy is not dead. They just lost their commander, but they still have the ability to reclaim that. So it's still good. I am kind of wondering what uh what God is doing in uh in the in the bot uh bottom right hand corner of the map right now, just building three pickets uh. Not sure about that, but securing stuff. It just it yeah. covers the entrance. I guess yeah. I guess I mean, it also removes awkward, that urchin but... slowly. Yeah, it's it's an awkward choice, but yeah, probably is for the urchin too. Now Randy's throwing the towel. Gorda has reset yep. the bracket. We are into the second stage of grand finals. Yeah, and I think we're actually within the second stage of uh, grand finals within very fast, actually, like within half an hour, uh, which is. Very much so, not like last time. So, uh, so yeah, very is... fast, but good, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> getting your getting your comp taken out in this game is just so so devastating. Even even in uh the the previous game when uh Gaudi lost his com, you could definitely tell that there was there's a stagger for a second, and uh you know Randy just for a second didn't capitalize off the off of that uh that stagger enough. So you know god i still got the game but it's definitely very important um what is randy asking me to confirm oh just the scores yeah i just want to make sure you get scores right so i think just get going to the next end of the bracket reset i guess Wait. Okay, still in the chat talking about how it's weird when energy buildings give half what you're used to, but I'm not sure what they're referring to. There wasn't slow being used in the energy buildings as far as I know. <clears throat> Alright, well anyway. We have the Grand Finals. Yeah, Grand Final Reset, Grand Final Second yep. Stage. We are going to be going to that as Gorda may indeed pull this out and get first place. Which is funny, because this is the first tournament they've actually been in for the weeklies. Um, yeah, Gorda is not, not showing up for any of the first two. So, uh, very, very funny. But, you know, Dregs, uh, unfortunately, due to health constraints, was not able to show up today and probably won't be able to for the rest of the season yeah but, uh, I, I mentioned that for the first two weeks uh Driggs was definitely definitely you know consistently grands i think every single time so so they were top rated i mean they, they won yeah. consistently every time i think yeah i think they just won both of them i don't think i know Driggs. i think got a bracket uh reset on on randy last randy? week yeah yeah 
because I remember it, uh, I've allowed them to, you know, uh, extend it to the day yeah. after due to due to health reasons. But um, yeah. So Randy showing up, got her showing up. Gonna be a gonna be a fun second set. Uh, hopefully they don't start on flat maps, but you know it probably will happen anyway. Probably the bracket reset means the DSR stuff doesn't count, right? Yeah, DSR is DSR is per set, so not. That's what I thought. Okay. So red so comic could happen three. again. Oh, Baron. Oh, okay. Baron. okay. Well, <laughs> so much for things happening quickly. We get are. your popcorn, people. Get get whatever food you want, water you want. Maybe get dinner. Honestly, like, order dinner. It's, yeah, if like, you're if you're in, even in Pacific time zone, just like it's two thirty for me. I'm thinking of ordering dinner, just because. Yeah. It's barren. Yeah, this like, map uh, honest... takes for and this usually <laughs> will devolve into a line from the bottom left to the top right corner of defenses, or the trench rather is the top, and then there's trench defenses alongside that trench, and it just goes nowhere. Yep, and uh, and honestly, like this is now I've, I've seen cheese, I've seen cheese on this map, right? So yeah, but if it I've fails, you're waiting forty map. minutes for the map to finish. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, uh, it's uh, it's still gonna be a while. <laughs> And you know, I was talking uh, to somebody about it was in Discord. I'm um, about this. I think it was uh, Control F. Um, Baron. I'm not sure that this is. All... It was. Uh, it was Steel Blue. But he was like, uh, I haven't played this map in forever uh, since 400 M storage start. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> literally, literally it's been, years ago. <laughs> it has been out of the meta for literally ever. Yeah. But um, very very interesting to see them pick this. Oh, where is the thing? Oh, got got it is restarting. Okay, that's fine. I need to reset the score count anyway. Yeah. And for some silly I reason, mean, you're gonna I have decided... time. You'd, you'd even have time when the match starts because like it's not I know. going anywhere. It's just annoying. I gotta. I should probably change how it's done. I had it. I think I tied it tied to the deluxe player list or something, and that was a mistake. Yes, I did, and that was a mistake. I don't know why I did that. Actually, I do know why I did that, because Deluxe Players was theoretically a way you could do it for without the spectator panels. Anyway, we're back. Yeah. We are We are in the game. The game has started. And we have our match between Gota and Randy. As Gota goes for jump bots, how like Gota, and Randy goes for shields, which is a good choice in general. That's a pretty barren choice. Yeah, definitely. Um, shields, you know... Uh, very suitable in-game in-game factor, as I believe you're talking about earlier. Yep. Um, although I've known them to suffer considerably um, in the in-game due to firewalkers existing. Um, very good at you know wearing down shields and preventing felons from doing much of much damage. That's um, true. If you spam them, and pyros also early game do have kind of the same effect. So this is going to be a very very interesting early game, definitely. Um, but if we if we do end up you know going past you know the twenty minute mark, definitely expect to see firewalkers firing into felon balls. <laughs> right. I mean, granted, if you get the twenty minute mark and players haven't started building striders yet, it's probably a tank mirror. But if it's not a tank mirror and players haven't started building striders yet, then yeah, something's up. Yeah, something's something's definitely up. And Although you know, on a map, this is a pretty famine map, so I don't expect that to happen. Yeah, this is. Uh, I think. The metal extractors are not very much on this map. It's like one point something. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've got it all. Some of the numbers. Two, yeah. All the numbers are on stream. So people watching the stream can see the numbers for each metal extractor. And like plus 1.8 is the highest pretty much throughout the map, except for a yeah. couple 2.1s. Man, it I need, is, to, need to yeah. install my widgets. But yeah, definitely. Um, So. So yeah, at this point, Randy, I, can't, I like the way they're starting out. They have. A reasonable spread of bandits. They're at least able to scout out a bit. Unfortunately, I didn't quite manage to get the constable before the Lotus came up, but at least able to know that that's there. Gorda, on the other hand, they got a puppy at one point, I think, doing some scouting, but didn't ultimately see that much. Randy as well. Oh, okay. I see what Randy's up to. Yeah, they're going for I the am. com. They're going for <laughs> troll com cheese, aren't they? Yup. Um. Now the unfortunate thing about that is that uh. Actually, no. They they have support coming. This might actually work. Hold on. Yeah, they've got they have bandits. They have the com. They've got. I mean, the lasers, of course, because that's the default weapon for comms. This yeah. is this is a thing. I think Goldus is gonna run away with her commander, but hey, that seeds ground, so Randy can still build behind that. 
Yeah, also, uh, a little... That, that Pyro did a lot of damage, uh, just kiting that commander, and it was kind of, kind of awkward. Uh, but I think, uh, gotta come... No, it jumped. Uh, jumps Pyro's away, down. I'm not Yeah, It's, uh, no, the commander's dead. Golda's commander is commander's, done. Yep. There's Very no good. way I can get rid of all those bandits in time. It's gonna be close. It'll be down to the Wait. last bandit. No, what? Really? What? Oh my yep. goodness, that actually didn't survive. <laughs> I totally miscalled it. My bad. <laughs> didn't even meaningfully siege ground. Randy's commander actually could be killed at... This pyro is gonna jump in. Yeah. Or could jump so. in and go for it. Not it doesn't seem to be. Actually, and you know, so, drone's but... down, so uh uh I think commander's dead here if if Okay, no my no micro on that pyro. No no micro, so not gonna die, but go to still aware of close. that, yes. Yeah, go to aware of that on radar, but now they're going for it. Now this commander why are you going forward, Randy? Your commander does not have healing modules. Well, it's dead now, so that's nope. that. <laughs> that's, uh... Okay, so well, uh, support units, <laughs> abandoned we salt to you. We were talking about uh, long games on Baron, but uh, might not, might not be that way. No, uh, no, we were talking about long games on Baron or cheese. <laughs> True. Uh, we saw was cheese not working. Oh, that's a good point. Um, why does Randy not have his base maxes capped? Well, that's, uh, that takes a minute and a half to pay to pay for itself. I mean, true, yeah. But, uh... Honestly, yeah, like, it's... no, seriously, like, considering what they have capped, they're just taking the ones that are worth it. <laughs> yeah, um... Or at least that was their thinking. I mean, now it doesn't matter. This... But if they're trying to go for getting as efficient a mech production as possible for a massive push that they'll support with units being built up behind as they're destroying Golda's economy, what they went for made sense. For the long game, what Golda went for made sense. Yeah, definitely. Um... However, pretty big lack of support for uh, North here. Although I think Randy should have just rushed that Lotus and uh, tried to get those mexes because now these pirates yep. are going to come in. Nope, it's a cheese fail, and Randy throws in the towel. Gorda, one <laughs> game away from getting first place in their first tournament of the Lobster Roll. I mean, not the first tournament, period. They're, they're yeah, experienced. Obviously, but... <laughs> but still, they're playing the game longer than I have, so yeah, now they're... Which is not saying a huge amount, because I only started playing in 2013, and this game's been around since, like, 2008. But the point is, they are... They got low... They This is not their first rodeo at all, so this is more just... This is more just the heavyweight coming in going, Oh, yeah, I'm here. Boom. Yeah. It's, uh... Yeah, losing... Randy's right. Uh, losing first game in, in best of threes with this map rule is kind of harsh. It is very, uh... Very rough. Um, also, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, why does fire shoot through terrain? Because that's, it's just... Uh... Okay, that I think is a technical problem because like, <laughs> trying to do the actual calculations to figure out whether or not the fire hits terrain or not Yeah, is... because fire isn't like a projectile. It's just like a cloud, I think, is the way it's Something like them. that. But... And it doesn't even... It goes basically through everything just because it's trying to stop it. I, mean, I think it might not go through shields, though stopping it in shields is easier mathematically because it's just speed yeah. calculations. But when it comes to terrain, it's arbitrarily shaped, so it's hard. I guess it could be done, but that just adds I a lot. It's... I think it's just not worth it in terms of the computational cost, probably. Yeah, I guess shields are also easier because you can just you can just code it to, you know, like if damage goes through shield, ignore damage. But, um, right, and, yeah. you know, take it to shield damage. So obviously easier, you know, with dedicated shields. But terrain, definitely, you know, because terrain is mostly map code, and that's uh, not as easy. Um, I mean, it's theoretic. It's not especially difficult because it just involves yeah. doing some work. You just you know the normals of the map surface. You know how to handle, or you know the geometry is. It's just that computationally, it's a lot of work. Yeah, definitely. Um, going back to Red Comet, though, <laughs> we are we are back here. Uh, I think Randy just wants like the uh, the safe pick here. Just trying Can't to say I blame them. Yeah, Cannot say I blame seriously. them. I mean, this this is absolutely going to be, well, interesting. They didn't win this the first time, though. They're going, to going for rovers instead of hovers. Randy going for tanks. It is rover v. tank. Very, once very again, we get to see match up this tournament. <laughs> uh, really? Because I've only seen it once. I, um, I think there was another game earlier that wasn't on stream that played it. Oh, okay. Because um, on stream, there's yeah. only one other game that went rover v. tank, which was a rover victory. Because the rover player just ended up 
outraiding the tank player very quickly and then got dominatrices after 15 minutes like, yeah it was just contains it was contains and the dominatrix was just kind of icing on the cake i don't see that happening this time though goto with only one scorcher and not able to get close enough to kodachi to deal any meaningful damage so randy getting a decent advantage in the early raid game though is playing a little unsafe here okay you gotta be careful no 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 let the kodachi heal a bit at least oh no just yeah, about to start no. healing. Still, though, Randy at least has put a bit of pressure on Golda. Golda looking to return the favor, and Randy doesn't have a whole lot in the way of defenses to actually stop that. At least not yeah, yet. I... No, they uh, don't. This... Actually, Kodachi's dead here. Um, well, if they pushed it. I think I think Kodachi's still dead, but... If the dark got in range, it would be dead. Yeah. Which is why Randy's not pushing it. <laughs> like, I can see Golda pushing it, but Randy's not going for it. Randy doesn't want to... Sur oh! Whoa! Oh. What is Golda doing? Going for, I guess, the less obvious route, but Randy was already... Just happened to have the commander there. Yeah, so, that was... That, I think that was just... Randy yeah. was in the right spot at the right time. They were, because the obvious route would be going behind. I think Golda was thinking, okay, if I take the obvious route, Randy's already got defenses in the back side of their base, so I should take the route on the other side of the crater, but Randy's commander happened to be there. Well... Actually, Randy might have known, because uh, he upgraded the commander at the, the radar module, I think. So he might have no, actually known. No, that's a default. Commander Is that default? Just Commanders have started with radar module since, I think, mid-2019. Okay, got you. Um, yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. If he... if Maybe he didn't then. Maybe he was just in there at the right time. But still, nice nice play. Um, seeing oh. Kodachi just kind of going on bot there. Going back in an earlier con conversation about fire is that fire is... From a technical perspective, I was actually incorrect. Fire can be treated like a beam laser and therefore do terrain collision efficiently. Okay, got you. So it's actually totally fine. It's just that it's intentionally going through things. Okay. In the same way that Gauss so does, but that's, that, that is that is intentional. Yeah, Gauss. Gauss is Gauss is just silly. Like it, it's a very very odd uh, damage type. But uh... well, of which there's only three units that have it there's dagger gauss turret and i want to say that the detriment has detriment yeah detriment has, has rapid yeah. fire gauss and that's it yeah it's like it's sonic's the same way where there's only archer and archer and why am i blanking on the name the ship that's the big siren that's it archer and siren's the yeah, one that siren. Not, i was like i was what's the big corsair but i was like no, Corsair's um, guns. But yeah, just odd, odd, odd damage types. In yeah, Corsair's odd things. Corsair's and, plasma um, bullets. It's nothing special. Yeah. Oh, speaking of special though, we do have Gota making a nice raid. Can get rid of Kodachi as well. Uh, they all get great cost, but still got a metal extractor down. Got a Kodachi down. It's not oh, ideal, uh, but it's something. However, yeah, at the same Kodachi time, yeah, Randy's on the western side. Yeah, I just, I was looking at uh, Randy's base, and I was like, ah, Kodachi's, and I looked over on the other side of the map, and I was like, ah, more oh, Kodachi's. Right. Sorry, my bad. Gauss doesn't go through terrain, it bounces off terrain. Okay, bounces. That would make sense, yeah. Um, But it's still, the idea yeah. is that flame is, fire is intentionally going through terrain, is apparently what the point is. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, like, in the way that, I guess, thermodynamics work, um, in terms of weaponry, but... I'm... We're starting to see, uh, so you see fencers here coming out, and, uh, I think one of these actually might die. Oh, that, how did that Konachi not die sooner? Um. I'm not sure, but it's dead now. At any rate, fencers are the, <laughs> dead, yeah. are a strong choice in this context. I'm actually surprised we didn't see fencers in the last tank mirror, though admittedly there were a lot more blitzes, which do make fencers' lives miserable. But against Kodachis, they're yeah. still kind of questionable just because they do rely on their range, and Kodachis can close the distance far Does too quickly. Does Gade lose a com here? No, nah, no, nah, they're no, fine. Okay. It's, a recon. The push. it's a recon yeah. com. They can jump away. It. They're fine. Randy, on the other hand, might be needing to walk. Like they they don't want to stay in there longer than they have to. Yeah, especially with all these fencers starting to, starting to form up here. Um, however, this Kodachi rush uh, on the north side is probably going to prove very effective, as long as they and don't it's... get kited by the, the Scorchers. And it's a distraction. Well, the Scorchers need to be close up, and that's working out yeah. for them. That's three down so far. It's absolutely in favor of the Scorchers. One metal extractor might go down, but there's a fencer already in place to stop the damage from spreading, and that leaves 
two more Kodachis left, one of which is about to die. Another one just got thrown itself away trying to take out Golda's commander. And the last one does manage to get rid of a metal extractor. Yep. So six Kodachis, five die, one takes out a mechs. Oh, one is and still Randy's dead. commander okay. dies in response. Oh, okay. So we are not looking at a game where Randy is having an easy time, but we are looking at a game where Randy still has a massive economic advantage. So while Gorda has yeah, what's, done a lot what's of damage, going on in Gorda's base? They're losing everything. <laughs> like Randy, this is a pyrrhic victory for Gorda, honestly. Yeah. Like this is why the game it's... does. Like commands is not the way the game ends. So Randy yeah. just needs to get some storage. If they want to worry about excess, maybe get some more energy. Otherwise, they are in a great spot right now. Yeah, and Randy's up like 15 just metal a second. Exactly, yeah. 13 to 15, yeah. So this is like wild. Um, and I think God of Home might die. No, God's going to jump away. Oh, no, you're right, no, though. God's uh, Commander, no. even if it jumps away, won't be able to get away from the Kodachis, yeah, but it I does have the dead. Lotus. Uh, oh, oh, what? <laughs> what I think... Okay, he was at 60 HP. I was the bar. How okay. Do I think what happened, I've never seen this happen before, but in my understanding of the way that the collision physics work in Zero K, he landed on the radar tower and then slipped off the radar tower, but because it wasn't part of the jump, the fall damage counted. So the fall of the radar tower dealt enough damage to kill him. I think that's what happened. <laughs> okay. I, I have never seen that happen before <laughs> in all this time, but I know that if units fall without a jump happening that it does cause them to take some fall damage yeah um so i that think that's makes... that's i know it's weird but yeah, I yeah. Think that's what happened <laughs> that or actually let me just double check one thing i it might have been that landing on the radar tower damaged the radar tower enough to kill it causing the death explosion to end up killing the commander but i don't think that's the case i just need to figure out how do i get yeah that? there it is uh... okay yeah, actually, that could have been it. That could have been the radar tower death explosion, actually. Never mind. Uh, speaking of things happening, uh, there's a Kodachi at uh, got his base just kind of, you know, wrecking everything right now. Oh, it's been there for a it's while, yeah. No, it's been, yeah. it's been kind of that is, hanging that is out. That is the hero Kodachi. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's like gold star. It's maybe like four times its value. Yeah, it's like... Five times its value. Four times, I think, is the is the silver star. Is the silver? Oh, yeah, because there's there's three bars in silver and the gold. Yeah. yeah. So, and he's still living. He's still living. And don't forget, Kodachi's regen. <laughs> yeah. So Randy might actually be able to still pull this out, though. I mean, they lost a lot at that point. The, I'm still laughing Not at to mention commander. that, like, Gotti doesn't really have an army right now. He, like, just has static defense. I think this yeah. is, this might be game. He has, I like, think two scorchers on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, okay, Crazy actually, Eddie in the chat confirming that it was indeed fall damage that killed the commander, not the explosion damage from the radar tower dying from the commander landing on it. Because I don't think okay. jumping on your own units hurts them. I don't think that... Part of, I don't think that works for friendly fire, but the collision damage could have been it. That makes sense, yeah. Um, yeah, those Kanachis are not going to end the game, but they are going to come very close. Uh, yep. God is very, very much the hurting. Both players are now back to 10 middle of a second. Um, but uh, it looks like Randy has a very significant energy advantage as well. Yeah, and the only th real threat going in their main base has just been taken out. While Randy mm -hmm. remains with the hero Kodachi. Oh no, it's a different Kodachi. With a new hero Kodachi. <laughs> the old hero Kodachi died. And the new hero uh, Kodachi died. Five Kodachis are probably going to be the end of this factory. Um, yeah, I there's no defenses. There's, yeah. there's nothing left. It's it's over. We're going to get a bracket. We're going to reset on the bracket reset. Randy has a chance to get this back in their favor. It is not Goda's game yet. But what a game that was. I mean, <laughs> I've... Like, I'm I am the replay link to that game just so I can go back personally later and be like, yo, what? Stop. I don't even... Okay, no, I've, I'm sorry. I. This is going to be a weird stream. No, I'm not going to do it. I have to leave the game to do that. Never mind. I was going to I was gonna go into Skirmish Match to double check whether or not hurting you can hurt your own units by landing on them with the commander with a recon comm jump, but I don't think you can. Yeah, I'll go... Yeah, I'll go back and, like, do that later. Um, but I... very, very strange. <sighs> I think my zero K might have just crashed. That's unfortunate. Okay. Um, close window and reboot it. Oh, 
system. <laughs> I mean, it certainly looked like too, the commander fell. Strange. It's just it, it's just either the commander fell or the radar tower explosion damage killed it. Yeah. Or Nubil is pointing out things. that maybe fire damage is applied randomly or fire logic is applied randomly. But I think no, I'm pretty sure Afterburn well, is consistent. Fire logic is like per yeah, I think it was it's like per tick or something. Yeah. So I don't think that was yeah, fire damage. Also, like, it would have been faster. Pretty, I was fairly sure that's like. In fact, from yeah, would have that. I think the afterburn on fifty HP would not have been enough to kill. It would have brought it down to about twelve or so. Yeah, because I was watching the health bar. I had the, I had the health bar pulled up, and it was at sixty, and it just suddenly dropped to zero. And I was like, "Uh, what?" Yeah, because like, I don't yeah. even think fire damage does that much, does it? No, it doesn't do. And it wouldn't. I don't think it would have done enough to kill purely off afterburn from sixty HP. But yeah, so it would have very done, strange. like I said, the radar death explosion would have killed because that is 80 damage in a relatively wide radius. And if it fell off the radar tower, it might have killed, but I, that's more fall damage than I would expect. Honestly, I think that's what I want to test because I think it was just the radar tower dying and the death explosion killing the commander. That to me feels like the most yeah. likely situation. But yeah, so that's that's a physics simulation for you. Weird things happen sometimes. You're okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the point. Stop. The entire point of the game is that it goes <laughs> it goes in these weird situations sometimes. I mean, so why not? Yeah, because it's like, like that's one of the, the the selling points of zero K is you know that like everything has a consequence. It's not like you know everything is like point and click. It's very much so. Individual particles have individual effects. Yeah, everything um, simulated is the idea. Yep, so very, very interesting day in there. <laughs> nice, uh, nice sandbox physics simulator. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, but yeah, that was the thing. Okay, Anarchate. Yeah, Commander jumped on radar. Yeah. Watch, it fell off of it. Oh, so the collision image from the ground? <laughs> so not from the radar, but from the ground. Okay. That's yeah, no, odd. that's what I meant. I meant like the radar, the radar was safe because it was a jump. Because when you land a jump, it's always safe. You don't take fall damage. But after you land the jump, if you fall off of something, if you're not jumping and you fall off of something or you fall out of a, a transport or anything like that, or you're pushed, like that's why units who are pushed off things get killed, is because oh, they hit okay. the ground and that deals damage. So hit hitting the radar, the land on the radar is safe, and then the fall off the radar is not. Yeah, which seems a little bit backwards. It's like, hmm, you're telling me landing on the landing on the metal object that explodes is safe, but landing on the ground is not. Hmm. But uh, well, landing, on the, like, landing was... on the ground is safe, <laughs> so long as you land straight on the ground and not on something else that then you fall off the ground. Yeah, or fall off to the ground. Because like, I've never had that issue when I use recon comms. I if I ever like cue a jump order to jump on something, it just slides off and I'm fine. Well, yeah, I've because, never seen that happen before. Yeah, because the <laughs> like, thing is that if you jump on something and slides off, it's dealing almost no damage, and your commander heals up every frame. Just a, Usually heals up pretty much every frame. But, well, okay, yeah. always, but oftentimes there's commanders have some kind of healing to themselves. And so, if it happens, you might have taken 60 damage, which is normally, like, a 1% of a commander's HP. Yeah. 1 or 2%. It's, like... <laughs> it's nothing. <clears throat> but in this case, we're not dealing with when it's 1 or 2% of full HP. We're dealing with when it's 100% of 1% of their full HP. <laughs> <laughs> I was so busy, like, trying to figure out what the heck happened. I'm not even sure where we're going to. Did you, oh, you Shimmer Shore. We're going, we're going to Shimmer Shore. Don't worry. I... <laughs> okay, we're going to Shimmer. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I got you covered. Got not, you covered. not too boring. <laughs> no, it's... I mean, it's going to be a quick... It should be quick, although I said Baron would take us half an hour or so. And look at us half an hour later on yeah, the last half of the it tournament. Yeah, it took us, like, five minutes, yeah. <laughs> so who knows how this is going to go. Anyway, All right, ships so double, versus double ships. ships. Yep. Pretty Gorda? pretty standard. Well, Gorda's starting out much more passively than I would expect. Randy building a mariner is no, no surprise, but Gorda building a mariner first off, not a cutter or a hunter? That... I mean, it's it's the safe option after last game. True. It's like, he tried to be super aggressive last game and then got super punished for it in mid, so not exactly surprising and also there's not a lot to fight over here from uh middle it's mainly just you know aggression control there's no mexes there really true so mainly here it's just going to be you know fighting around in the edges um yeah so that's that is the thing to bear in mind i hadn't really thought about that 
But still, um, I think, yeah, uh, last game, last game, I think Randy uh, made two Mariners in this game. He only made one. So I think he, both of them basically started the exact same way this game. Um, that's another thing I've noticed, though, is that uh, Gore does not build uh, some of his title gens next to Mexus or Overdrive. In oh, fact, yeah, I'm that's... Not even that's the thing. That's intentional. They were. I was it's seeing some chat about that. Yeah, apparently. I'm not sure the exact justification for it, but apparently Goda will intentionally build energy structures away from the overdrive grid at the start of the game, I think in order to make sure that their energy goes entirely towards production. Because if you think about it, and this is what I'm thinking through, is that when you're early on in the game, you don't have much energy or metal. So if your overdrive, or if your energy is going towards overdrive, it's giving you more metal, but you don't have enough energy to actually spend it yet. And you're also trying to build yeah. up your metal production anyway. Whereas if you have your energy going for itself, you don't have as much being drained out of storage, which means once you get to the point of the game where you start having a bit more metal or you're starting to worry about energy, you have a bit more storage to work with and, you have a bit, and then it goes into max storage faster. So then overdrive becomes more efficient a bit more quickly. It's a subtle thing, and I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to really think about it for the maths, but apparently that I think that's what Gota's justification is. Yeah, but I am, also, I am Gota's spitballing. factory is dead here. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, no, I should point out. <laughs> it's just, just, yeah, it's it's dead. It's like straight up. Yeah, like, I mean, we're talking about this giant long game micro-optimization of the maths of your economy, and Gota is being assaulted on the main base and may not have I'm a not long game to work with. Certainly not, not with their sure energy structures. Randy, why is Randy being passive? Why is he not just like running into it? He doesn't need to be passive here. Probably because if they lose all these forces, they're dead, and they're not 100 sure what's behind there. Ah, uh, true. So I think, I think he's just going for it. Yeah. Oh, they are now. Yeah, now they realize uh, there's yeah. nothing to stop them. Yeah. Wow. Um, man, Randy just literally rushed only, only, only Hunter, and uh, yep. that worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, Shimmer Shore is not a map that's likely to get into uh -oh. a good late game, you know? And, and that is uh... it. Randy takes it. Going 2-1 in the bracket reset. Pulling out a win after... Well, pulling out a rapid rush after one of the weirdest games I've seen in years. I I, I kind of regret that that game is <laughs> yeah, part honestly. of a larger... Vi is the middle of a larger video in the Grand Finals. Or middle near the end. Like the fourth game played in the entire set. Because that was the that's the game. If you're gonna watch any one game out of this entire video, out of this entire set or pair of sets, game two of the bracket reset or the grand finals second stage reset, whatever you wanna call it, that is the game to watch. Because yeah, definitely that was weird. That was cool. That was the most zero K game out of all of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It honestly felt like some like weird big team game interaction in a 1v1, honestly. That's what it felt like to me. I was like, things that you normally see happen in like big team games where random interactions happen. Yeah. But it happened in a 1v1. That was that was kind of what it felt like. <laughs> but yeah, um, good games to both players. These were those were some really good games, especially like Goddess games in the first set were really, really well played out. Absolutely. Yeah, congratulations to all the players. Congratulations to Randy for winning, Golda for second place. Steel Blue for third, Stuart for fourth, and thank you all of you for joining to play, because it's always good to have people playing, and of course these are weekly, so keep coming back and keep getting better. And thank you to you, Saika, I guess I'll go with, for commentating. And thanks. You're welcome. And thanks to all of you for watching. So, that's it. We'll be back next week. Until then, have a good night, everyone. See you later. Good night.